watched my body move away in the circle bed. And I looked down, I, w I was back up in the blackness, and I looked down, and my body was in that circle bed in a, like a bubble and crying hysterically. And then I looked out into the blackness, and there was another bubble, and in it was me at about a year old, face down in my crib crying, just as intensely. And I kept looking back and forth between the two scenes because I was, you know, obviously confused. And about the third time I looked back and forth, it hit me. There was a very strong presence of this being that was um, an energy or a force, certainly not an old man with a long white beard, but an energy that just moved through me and was me and was still it, that was just pure love. If you, if you took the love I felt for my grandmother and you multiplied it by about a million, maybe that you could get the intensity of this love. It was very warm and very, um, it held me up. And as, as I realized that, I had been an atheist until that moment, but as I realized that, then the baby in the crib became the center of a cloud of bubbles. And in, in the cloud of bubbles, in each bubble there was another scene from my life. And together, this being and I bounced through all these bubbles, and I re-experienced my life. And I re-experienced everything, including what the other people in the bubble experienced, too. I mean, I, w I wasn't just re-experiencing it as myself, but I was my mother and my dad and my brother and my boyfriend who went on become, to become my husband, and then my kids. I was them as well as me, and I could feel the love. And I could feel the negative times, too. I could feel everything that was going on. And as I looked opposite from my body, looked up into the tunnel, there I saw a light. The light was so bright that it was brighter than 10,000 suns. And I immediately said, this should be burning my retinas. But it wasn't. It was a gentle but powerful light. It was pulling me. It was pulling me like a gentle magnet closer and closer. And the closer I got, the more I was filled with an ecstasy, with a love, with an unconditional love of me as Andy. And as I got closer to the light, all of a sudden, I popped into a giant sphere. It was, it was about the size of a, of a basketball coliseum. And I was suspended in the middle of this sphere. And all around me, at all parts of the sphere, up, down, sideways, left, right, all over, were, were miniature motion pictures of my lives and what was going on. And I could see, I could touch, I could feel, I could sense every emotion that was taking place in all of those lifetimes. And when I would concentrate on one, I would immediately be there. I would be reliving what I had lived, and I would remember the reliving. And then I would think about another area, and then I'd pop into another movie. And I would do this for some period of time, but you have to understand that when you're in the eternal now, time doesn't make any sense. So it isn't time like yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's happening all the time, all at once. And I was there for an extended period using Earth terms. And then, all of a sudden, I popped out of the sphere, and now I'm in front of the light. And the light is so warm and so glowing and so forgiving. And the light had no, no judgment. There was no condemnation. There was no blaming, no shame. There was nothing but love and acceptance. And the light was viewing me. The light knew everything that I ever thought, did, or will do. It knew everything. And I was infilled with beauty and love and hope and truth and life and joy, but it was all one thing. But also simultaneously to that infilling and knowing that I was in the presence of God, all of my experiences rushed up too. And all of the pain that I'd caused everyone in my entire life came with it. And God said to me, I know everything about you and there is nothing hidden. And in that knowing that I was known, I experienced a life review of all the people that I had hurt in my life. I experienced all of the pain that I'd ever given to every single person of my entire life. I didn't look at their pain. I lived their pain. And it was the pain that I gave them intentionally and the pain that I didn't even know that I had given them.
And I remember that my sister Cynthia, who had not run away, was prominent in this because Cynthia was very close to me in age and Andrea was older than me. And so Cynthia and I, we tussled a lot and I caused her an immense amount of pain. And I've, it was, I describe it now as hell because it was so much suffering. I suffered so much suffering that I had given away intentionally and unintentionally. And I judged myself as guilty and shameful. And, and it was everything that I'd ever done from the moment of my birth to intend and not intend to hurt. And I, I conceive, because I'm a, I'm a Christian minister, I conceive of that as sin now, the pain that I gave to people. And meanwhile, as I was going through this experience of self-judgment, the voice was saying to me, I know you. I've always known you. You are my creature. I made you. I make you. I love you as you are. I have always loved you. I loved you into being. I love you with all the pain you caused, and I love you without it. I love all of you. And none of this is a surprise to me. I know this about you already. And because I felt shame at my actions, in comparison with the infinity of love, I judged myself guilty, and I was forgiven. Jesus talks about the kernel and the chaff, and the chaff gets burned off in the fire, sort of like that. And then all of the pain was gone, and I was left with only love and beauty and joy and truth and hope and compassion, all one thing. And I got to bring with me into heaven all of the love that I'd ever given away and all of the love that was ever given to me. And that was the treasure of myself. Then it was this feeling of playfulness. And I said, um, well, what are we going to do now? And, and our communication was like telepathic. It, it was words I could hear, but it wasn't with using my mouth or anything. So there wasn't the physical stuff. So anyway, um, you know, my, my, what I said was, well, what are we going to do now? And God said, well, we're going to look at the life that you just left. And I thought, oh, something serious. Okay. And there appeared, like, to, uh, off to the left, it looked like a TV screen. And God had control of the remote. And what was going to start playing was my life that I just left. And so, um, as I began to watch this, I then became involved in it in a completely different way than just one-dimensional watching it. I was part of it. I was reliving it again, but from a multi-dimensional multi -dimensional aspects. Um, I was me again, but I was also the, the person I was involved with, whatever interaction. And so what was happening was we were stopping at significant learning events in my life. And the one in particular, that made the most impact on me, and this is also would be called, this whole thing is uh, called a life review. So my grand, this is, what this was, was around, when I was around 14 years old, my grandmother lived with us, with my parents and me, and my grandmother lived in our house, in the house all together, and she had my bedroom. My bedroom was given to her, and I was kind of a spoiled brat at that time in my life which is a little bit typical of a lot of teen, young teenagers. But anyway, um, I didn't like that she had my room. And um, anyway, this one day she came walking out of it and she fell. She walked with a cane and she was unsteady. She fell down and so hard that she dented the wall that she hit. And oh my gosh, as I think of it now, I mean, the force it must have hurt her so bad. And at that time, I, I only thought of myself and I laughed at her. It was awful to relive this from a completely different perspective. I felt her pain and, you know, how she felt towards me. And, but really, it was me who was hard on myself, just thinking what a horrible, spoiled brat teenager, only thinking of herself and not about anybody else. And, oh my goodness. So, um, I just thought I was the worst person. And 
God had to really ask me some questions, you know, like, what did you learn from this now? And I, you know, we really talked about this a lot, and, um, and I stayed for a long time being hard on myself, and we really had to work through it. But we got to the end of it, and, and I got to accept the idea that this was an okay thing. It's really being on Earth is a series of, of learning experiences. And um, through this, I became a way more compassionate person. And so there were other events that we looked at and I re-experienced in a way more broad view. And um, I also discovered that God has a sense of humor because we chuckled at some of the events that we looked at. And that was very relieving to me. God is not just, or in my experience of all this, not judgmental in any way at all. And they were all moving, kind of dancing, and, they, it, and, and the movement of all these fragments of light looked to be like it was of one mind. They were all in union together. Well, as I got closer, three fragments broke away and they came toward me and they started greeting me. And they were welcoming me home. They were welcoming me home. And I recognized them as family. Now, I told you I didn't really have a, my family was, you know, I, I never really had a sense of family in life. But these light beings, I recognized them. I recognized them as, a, as my soul family. And eventually a dozen of them came and greeted me, welcoming me, welcoming me back, welcoming me back. And we kind of, we moved further into the light together and we started to experience a life review. And in the life review, I got to see everything in my life, not only from my perspective, but everyone I'd ever interacted with from their, their perspective. I got to see their anger, I got to see their frustration, I got to see their love. And so it was like my consciousness had fragmented into these multiple streams of fragment of, of consciousness, multiple streams of consciousness. And I was experiencing my life in its entirety over again. And I got to see things that, well, like I said, I was a brash young man. I was a street tough. And um, I, I did a few things I wasn't too proud of. And my soul family were in this experience with me. And they were experiencing it the same way I was. And so some of the unsavory parts of my life, I wasn't, I wasn't too proud of, and I was a little ashamed that they had to experience this. But they just loved me. They just loved me and supported me. In fact, if anything, they were, they were excited to be able to experience this, this part of my life. I started seeing parts of my life that I didn't have a foundation to. In other words, I went past my death and into my future life. I didn't realize what it was at the time, but I knew I didn't have a foundation. It wasn't anything that I had lived, but I started seeing my, my future. It was a little different though, because in, in the life review itself, I saw everything, it was so crystal clear. All the ripples, Whenever I did something with loving intention, it created all oh, the biggest ripples of, of after effects. It would just expand and expand. And, um, and when I started moving forward past my life into, the fu into my future, um, it was a little different. It was like I was looking down a corridor. I like to think of it now as a, a corridor of potential that I had agreed to certain things in my life that I would accomplish, and they were in that core corridor, in that central corridor.
But then the way to get to those circumstances, the way to get to those moments in life, there was some haziness on the sides. I, in other words, I could, I could, you know, I could kind of go this way or I could go this way in order to get to where I had agreed to go. As I continued to marvel at this and, and wonder what was happening to me, I started, I started drawing towards this light that had this such presence and such love to it. And as I, as I started moving towards it or it moving towards me, there was no reference point to understand what, you know, who was doing what. Um, I had what many people have called a kind of a life review. And the review for me were events in my life that um, really defined who Jim was, who, who I feel my sense of self is, my sense of self-esteem and identity. And most of them were around places I've struggled and, and been stuck with. And as I experienced an event, it seemed to resolve in my mind and would disappear and another event would emerge. And with each disappearance, the light got brighter and brighter and brighter. And eventually, I began to feel as if I was actually on the edge and then being enveloped by the light. And I felt my legs filling with this light, this presence, this love, this infinite unity, acceptance, absolutely no judgment. All the judgments I had entertained in the life review were mine. And as I let them go, I actually was able to release closer and closer to this light. Um, it was all brilliant light. Um, and it didn't burn your eyes. It's not like staring at the sun where you can't look for very long and then you have to look away. This was uh, a brilliant light that, that you could look at and you wanted to stay there. You were drawn to it. And I remember the love, the love, the forgiveness, the truth. Truth was known. Knowledge was known. Um, everything was going to be okay. That was the message at all times to me. Um, the Christ, when he arrived, immediately started what near-death experiencers call as a life review. And for me, how mine wor worked was, it was like a screen. And on the screen were pictures of people's faces. And these people were uh, the people that I had had interaction with throughout my entire lifetime. And whatever I had caused that person to feel as a result of my interaction with them, that's what I felt for, for a brief second, very intense. Whether it was we had a good interaction or we had a bad interaction, I felt that intensity uh, and then it kept rolling, just just fast as could be, just, just lightning fast of people's faces. But yet I comprehended everything that was going on. Time has no meaning. Um, the time that I was there by earthly terms was four hours, but it seemed like I was there only a, a few seconds. But time has no meaning there. Uh, the next thing the Christ asked me, he said, what did you learn from seeing all of these faces? And I said to him that love was the best choice. And he said, you're right. And I saw how I had to be careful how I treated people. And um, I never, never will forget that part of my near-death experience. My body's sort of this opaque thing. I'm sort of floating through space. I'm coming into this presence of this white light. It was like life. That's the only way I could interpret it. I wasn't afraid. I felt absolutely safe. My body was, when I looked at it, it was almost kind of see-through, but I felt okay. And I thought, I've died, but I feel wonderful. This feels great. 
this is a, an incredible experience. And then I found myself focusing on this light that I was coming into the center of, that I was merging with, if you will. And the only thing I can say, because I was not a born-again Christian, but I, I thought, this, I think this is Jesus. I couldn't see anybody, but there was a personality in the presence of this light. It was white light, indescribable in its uh, purity. And the other feelings that went with it were, I'm loved. I'm in the presence of love. There's no sense of time at all. And in the presence of knowledge. And I felt so good, so loved. And he said, Jonathan, I want you to look at your life. And then every moment, every thought, every action, everything that I saw, beheld, did, I was living it. From the beginning, all the way through, until that present time, that's the only way I can describe it. I was living my life. No judgment on it, just this is your life. It's over, and I'm in, the, in his presence again, aware of that. And he said, Jonathan, what did you see? And I said, I just see negative, destructive choices my whole way. I, 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 there's nothing good. All my thoughts, the suspicions, everything was negative. That's my life. And he said, all right. Then it faded away. So here I was, I have these 12 very, very tall beings of light regarding me, standing and looking at me, looking inside me. And I knew that they could see everything I had ever done, every thought I had ever had, every dream I had ever dreamt, every word I had ever spoken. And I'm thinking of the 60s. <laughs> and while I'm standing there kind of judging myself and wanting to shrink and, you know, oh, don't look at that part, you know, they were just loving me. They were showing, they were the personification of the rest of the love that I had been walking in. They let me experience it coming from other beings rather than just from the all. Because we can't, because we've been playing this game of being humans and separated, we're used to dealing with others. Dealing with the all is in fact mind blowing. You know, it's we can comprehend that. So I had these beings there who were just loving me, just loving, seeing me for everything I had been, everything that I am. And got to the very top of the end of the tunnel where the light was, and in that very moment I was delivered into the hands of God. And God and I stood together, and God was on my right, and heaven was behind us. And I was very aware that heaven was a planet. And God and I stood together. And as we're looking out in front of us at the galaxy and all of the stars in front of us, I hear in my left ear, um, it was a vintage-sounding projector, and it sounded like the movie, a movie was starting. And as soon as I heard the projector going on my left ear, I could see the stars that were just stars at one time all of a sudden lined up like a curtain. And the curtain opened slowly to the right. And I heard three, two, one. And it was a life review of Erica McKenzie on the projector screen. So it was God and I in a big movie theater in the galaxy. And that's when my life review began. And literally for me, um, the life review was everything from that day that I was born up until that day that I had taken my last breath and I died. And in this life review, um, I was shown everything from things like losing a tooth, losing my first tooth, um, you know, graduating from high school, any kind of awards that I had won um, in athletics or cheerleading, all of these things that were great accomplishments and they were really um, happy times, but they were significant 
things that man um, deems as significant, if you will, accomplishments. And um, as I'm watching all of these events unfold in chronological order, I'm actually reliving the event in that very moment as if it had just happened the first time. As we're observing it, I'm living it. And we finally get to the end on the day that I died. And um, the movie screen turned off. And then all of a sudden, in front of me, I knew to look down, and it was this telepathic communication. And as I had the knowing I needed to look down, appear in front of me a pair of eyeglasses. And I've never worn glasses before, and um, God said to put them on. And I, I didn't know how I was going to put these glasses on, because you, I have to understand these glasses weren't normal uh, pair of glasses that you would find here on Earth. These were the size of a vehicle. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to put these glasses on? I just don't even know. And I remember, as soon as I had the thought of how am I going to do this, it didn't even matter. My hands were already drawing the glasses near to put them on my face. And by the time that I got them to my face, it wasn't even a problem. They fit perfectly. And I could see. I could really see. And then God said, now look. And as soon as he said, now look, again, I heard that vintage movie projector in my left ear. Three, two, one, the curtain opened again, life review of Erica McKenzie. So this was my second life review. And this time, I didn't see at all what I had seen the first time in the life review. Uh, this time, I could see. And everything that I saw in this life review, starting with the day that I was born until that day that I had died, was not at all what I had seen before. This time, these were things that were important to God not important to man. And they were not at all those um, accomplishments that I talked about before. These were things like love and acts of kindness, things I couldn't even remember that I had done. Um, befriending someone that everybody was mean to or you know, a, a neglected um, an animal and I helped an animal or giving money to a homeless person when I didn't really have money to give. Um, helping someone you know, across the street, an elderly person. Every single action, word, thought, feeling was all about love. And we lived all of those series of events just like the first time, like it was happening for that very first time. I lived it again and I felt so much unconditional love from God as we're reliving the series of events together. And we got to the day again that I died and the life review was over and as soon as the life review was over I remember knowing to look up and so I looked up and this was the only time that I was able to see um, God in a physical form at all and what it was was it was hit from his shoulder um, down to his fingertips and his arm was bigger than a semi-truck. And I remember him making the motion to look up like this, and that's what he did with his arm. And I looked as high as the highest stars, and I could barely see anymore. It was so high up in the air. And I watched, and I looked in the palm of his hand, and in the palm of his hand appeared a rock, a single, large, huge boulder, if you will, rock. And God and I watched together, and I watched him let loose the rock. And the rock was falling, and it was falling for such a long time, it seemed like just forever and we're watching this rock fall together and I hear him say I am the rock I am the light and when he said I am the light the rock was glowing it was the most incredible powerful light it was so brilliant in fact almost blinding but yet I was able to watch keep watching it and as the rock came right in front of us and it's still falling in front of me appeared the largest body of water, largest than, larger than the largest ocean, if you can imagine. I couldn't even see the borders outstretch all around me. And we watched this rock fall, and it fell into the ocean, and it made one single ripple, just one. And we watched that single ripple grow together, and that single ripple, it grew and it grew and it grew until you couldn't even see the borders of that ripple anymore. And God said to me, you are the rock. You are the light. You are the ripple that affects mankind. And I knew in that very moment with the two life reviews what that meant. And it wasn't 
It wasn't about just me, Erica. It was about each and every one of us being that, that very rock when we're here on this journey, this earthly journey as humans, that we affect each and every person, even if we never meet them, just like that rock did in that water and the rippling effect. And I understood what that meant. But my experience was from a car wreck in the 70s and I left my body and, and flew through what felt like a tunnel of lights just flying at me and then I just emerged into this world of brilliant white light in a, an, a place that was nothing but love. That's the only way that can describe it, just a complete feeling of love. And I stood before a being of light that did nothing but love me, was capable of only loving me. And I watched my life, I saw my life review, and I'm the one that condemned myself and criticized myself in the sense that I just wanted to do better. To be in this place and to be in this presence of this life that just unconditionally loved me made me want to treat people better and made me want to love myself. I, I think uh, I was no different than, than a lot of people that, that are always criticizing themselves or uh, feeling guilty about things. That's the way that I was raised. That's the religion that I was raised in that, you know, uh, God was someone to be feared and and that I would be judged so I needed to walk a straight line and it was it was so different than that I was loved un unconditionally and all I wanted to do was come back and do better and love people and and learn how to love and forgive and be a better person and have something better to offer that's when the download came I mean that's when it's like it, it almost felt as if everything went away and then I became part of everything I was part of that, I was part of everything out there, my son had melded into me, I had melded in to what I call God and we had literally became one. And then just all this knowledge, truth, comprehension, everything came flowing through me in a way where it was very, very intimate, it was very, very personal. I didn't see the future, I didn't see you know, the creation of the world. What I experienced was my life my life and what had happened in my life and I saw all the things in my life that were beautiful, all the things that were painful, all the things that I judged as mistakes. You know, I saw things that I judged as wrong and yet in this beautiful embrace there was no judgment. I, I saw that it was all unconditional love. It was as if not just you know the being that held me but the entire universe was saying look how much we've loved you. Look how much we've supported you. Look how we've honored your life. Look how we've allowed you to go and learn and choose and grow and be. And it was absolutely unconditional love. So everything I saw was very, very um, loving. It was perfect. I realized that my life was perfect, even with the pain, even with the accident, everything that had happened. And it was communicating with me almost in a telepathic sense. But you... <clears throat> When you think about a, a, a big state, a big uh, auditorium, <clears throat> and in this auditorium it's a hot day and you're inside and all the lights are out, and someone opens the door and steps into it, you see their silhouette and the light floods in around yeah. them and that's what you see. Mm -hmm. As this being came close to me, I have had what I believe to be the single most important aspect of the near-death experience other than it happens, panoramic life review. Everyone will have this. There was nothing unusual about me except that I got back here. But here's what will happen. You will start feeling all the childlike emotions. Then you will literally have a panoramic life review. You like will, a movie? It, no. It's not a movie. No, it's interactive. You are there again. You are experiencing your own birth, every interaction with every person that you've ever had, every event, every point, every perspective, every event, and you're watching it from a third person. Now, I've often tried to figure out a way for people to think this. The only way that I, in my simple way, can say it is, is that you're going to judge yourself and watch these events from this point. If God couldn't show up today and God sent you in the events that you are about to watch, what difference did God make in the lives of the events that you're taking place? It's a heavy responsibility, but that's what we're doing here. If God couldn't show up today and you had to be the difference that God made in, made in these situations of what you're about to see, what difference did God make? But not only that, 
I literally became every person that I have ever encountered. I got to feel the direct results of my interaction. I got to feel the pain, frustration, humiliation, anger, anxiety that I had inflicted on thousands of people, not just a few people. What a jerk. And I can promise you this, it wasn't a good day for God that day. Because if I was supposed to make a difference, I can understand why fear and hatred and animosity toward what we think of why me, God, why me. I can see how people feel like that if I was to represent it. After I had the Panoramic Life Review, and I had to sit down and reflect what a complete jerk I was and what a failure I was as a spiritual being, we are not poor, pitiful, struggling humans trying to have mystical experiences. We are great and awesomely powerful and mighty spiritual beings trying to have human experiences and we're just not real good at it yet, but we're attempting. That psychology must be in place. We must take that as the basis of how we look at ourselves so that we know how to open up. We can't keep looking at ourselves as struggling, stupid little humans. We can't because it's just not, it's wearing too thin. It's not applicable. We are not that. And after this, this being came back to me and I was safe. I, I was struggling with it. I don't have any problems telling anybody that when you face and see the opportunities that you have and the ability of what you're capable of doing and as rotten and as lousy a job as I did, don't think that you don't have remorse. You know, a lot of times people ask me about hell and, and because of just the lifestyle and what I had. And I always tell people, you know, they didn't bring it up while I was over there and I darn sure didn't bring it up. And so if anybody wants to know where hell is, I'm going to let them ask that question when they get there. If they didn't talk about it, I certainly wasn't going to talk about it. Another thing that I learned is that there's no judgment on the other side. God does not judge you, only loves you. And I had a life review, so I saw my life from the moment I was born until the moment I died. And there was no judgment, only love, just pure love and acceptance. and. I didn't judge me either, so there's no judgment. And um, I thought something was missing, <laughs> you know, when I saw my life review and I thought, wow, that was interesting. Something's missing, what is it? What we all think is that there's judgment and condemnation and all of that, and that's not the case. You're just totally loved. Um, so, there's another thing that I learned, and that is that it's the small things, it's the little things that we do. And if we do it with love, it doesn't matter whether you're taking out the trash or cooking dinner for your family or, or picking up syrup that's on the side of the road. It doesn't matter what you do. If you do it with love, that is so huge so huge and that's the kind of things that you see in a life review it's the the hand on the shoulder for someone who needs it um, giving money to the poor person that's standing on the street you don't know who they are it's um, listening to someone who needs to be you know just needs a friend it's those little things sharing your toys when you were little you know it those things are what's the most important thing, and those are huge to God. And um, it's helping one person at a time. Like you walk outside and you smile at someone, that smile can travel around the world in one day. And the lives that you touch, are, it's enormous, it's huge. And you may not think that you're touching lives, but you're touching lives all over. It's you're moving mountains and you are changing the world. Even if you don't think you are, you really are because that's what's important to God. And that's what you'll see in your life review. And it's just, what doesn't matter what you do, do it with love and you're gonna be just fine. The third question he asked was, um, in what way did I give of myself? And I started to answer this, but I got really confused as to what he meant. So then um, he started to show me and tell me at the same time. He showed me like a picture and 
he would speak. You would see everything all at once. And uh, this is what we call your life review. I don't know if any of you have heard of that, but it's your life review. And um, what part of it was, was um, when I was in grammar school, I had called a boy a name, a uh, bad name, and it had hurt him so badly. And you relive all the emotions of that person, of how much you hurt him. And I had hurt him very badly, which I never realized. And you feel all the pain you put that person through. So when you go through your life review, you live everything. I mean, it's, it's really fast. Uh, there's like no time over there. And you feel all the good, all the bad that you've done to someone, you know? And, and you never realize you, you've done this to the person. But, you know, when you're over there, you learn it. <laughs> I just started to go up into this light. And it was the most wonderful feeling. Nothing else mattered. Nothing. And as I gravitated up there, the next thing that I remember, I was in the presence of... I just, it still gives me chills to think about it. A, a divine power. I mean, I could not even look. It was so humbling. I couldn't even look. And I was, I was, I was being talked to. Um, I remember being asked, what good have I done? I just couldn't look. But the next thing I remember, there's all these souls. It's like an auditorium type thing, but it's not an auditorium. It's just all over. And my life, re I, has, I had a life review. And it started from the day I was born until the day I died. And I know some people here have heard this before, like Kent's heard it a couple times, but uh, I don't mean to be boring to you there, but I remember seeing things that were just, not only were they actual things that happened, I could feel myself going through things myself, but I also could feel everybody else's feelings and thoughts about me. It was terrible. <laughs> I mean, when you, when you have a lot of power like I did as a policeman, you affect a lot of lives. And the same thing with being a city manager or a big boss where you, uh, maybe you've terminated somebody or maybe something's happened and, and um, you wish you could have another chance to redo it. And what happened in uh, my life review is that it was just powerfully loving and I felt almost like a totem pole way of being in this life review where we have at the portal, I was more identity, and then on this other part, I was just like soul and I wasn't my identity. And in the life review, I had um, this connection to the smallest part of me that was like the, the little ego or whatever we want to call it and um, even like my animal nature, and I had this connection also to the part of me that's just soul, and then I had connection to the people on the outside all around me, and, and yet I could feel the oneness as well, and all the layers of everyone and everything that was. And then I also had a connection beyond that that was source, and um, I say source a lot because it feels almost weird for me to use God since my NDE because it feels almost like I'm narrowing it, but I, I understand we need words here, so I say both, but I was connected to source as well, and, and it all came together in my life review, and I could feel everyone, and I could feel myself, and I, I had compassion on myself and other people the way as parents when we have a toddler or two toddlers say they're playing and and you know one gets mad and pulls the block from the other and we're not thinking of that toddler you're evil or you're bad or now you're going you're not going to make it to heaven you know or or if your toddler runs down the hallway and trips and falls um, 
it's not, you know, I'm going to write that one down. It was like everything was it. I just understood everyone like children, and, and I wanted for everyone, including myself, and in that life review, I was able to feel for myself the way we would feel for our own children. And I had com this compassion for myself where I wanted for myself to be happier and to do, you know, to do better, not as in, you know, get the higher grade, but just to be happier, that kind of better. Like, have fun, lighten up, it's okay, you know, and things like that. And um, in this experience, in the life review, um, I had someone in my life who I thought was my enemy, and this person came up in the life review, and I had, I didn't even realize, it's not that I thought consciously, I should say, of enemy, but it, I saw her and I had judgments in my mind, you know, she's so bad or whatever from what I had experienced or witnessed, and um, I didn't realize that I had held that in me, and in the life review, I um, connected with this person, and that was probably the most powerful feeling of love in my whole NDE was when I was able to connect with who she really is beyond all of the things I thought I knew about her and the judgments that I made. And it doesn't condone, you know, what had, what had happened, what I had seen, but the love that I felt from the source coming through at all the different levels and being able to see her and who she really is and what she's connected to was another mind-blowing thing for me. And so um, I, after my NDE, I came back and immediately was just, it's, it was a big relief. I was sobbing and just all this stuff coming out and I could almost feel like my body physically was changing because I had this love for her that was like the love that you would feel for a firstborn child. And I just, I just loved her so much and I, I wanted for her. Soll ich jetzt schon sterben, weil ich, ich spürte, jetzt hat mein letztes Stündlein geschlagen. Und äh, in dem Moment größte Auflehnung und Panik kam eine unbeschreibliche Ruhe über mich. Und es öffnete sich ein Zeitfenster, sage ich mal. Es war, als würde die Zeit stehen bleiben. Wie in dem Walt Disney Film von Don Röschen, mhm. wo die ganze Belegschaft in dem Moment da äh, stehen bleibt und 100 Jahre verharrt in der Pose. So war das. Die Zeit stand, blieb stehen und ich... Äh, sah mein Le also nicht sah ich erlebte mein Leben noch einmal bis zu diesem Zeitpunkt und zwar zweierlei einerseits erlebte ich es selber noch mal ich sah meine Geburt ich erlebte sie ich lernte laufen ich lernte schwimmen ich lernte lesen und alles erlebte ich wirklich noch einmal und andererseits war ich nebendran und beobachtete das alles also ich war zwei Personen eine erlebende und eine beobachtende und als ich da durch war und wieder im Moment angekommen war, spürte ich eine, ein liebevolles Wesen neben mir. Ich kann es nicht anders beschreiben. Da war niemand. Aber ich spürte eine sehr, sehr starke, liebevolle Ausstrahlung, Ausstrahlung von jemandem. Und dieser jemand dachte zu mir in Gedanken, so, jetzt hast du das nochmal gesehen, wie beurteilst du jetzt dein Leben? Freundlich, nicht, ja... So. Hm. Und ich äh, sah, machte dann natürlich ehrlich meine Meinung und sagte, ja, aus diesen 20 Jahren habe ich jetzt nicht viel rausgeholt. Ich habe dieses Geschenk des Lebens eigentlich auf eine Art verplempert. Und ich spürte dann ein, klingt jetzt komisch, wenn man das so sagt, ich spürte ein Lächeln, ein liebevolles, verzeihendes Lächeln. Und äh, mir wurde dann gesagt, ja, das ist jetzt deine Meinung. Du wirst aber nicht be- oder verurteilt, für was du gemacht hast, sondern es zählt allein das Erleben und deine Sammlung von Erfahrungen. Now the important thing to understand is that that Gateway Valley was much more real than this world. Far sharper, crisper and more real than this. This is very dreamlike by comparison. That was a deep deep mystery to me for a long time, trying to understand that ultra-reality. It's very hard to put it into words. And when I would first describe that to people and talk about the ultra-reality, people would say, well, is that like high-def TV? Well, <laughs> it's a lot more than that. The way we know things there, you don't see with the eyes, you don't hear with the ears, you become 
others to feel the emotional power of existence. In fact, uh, often if you get into the near-death experience literature, you read a lot about uh, the tens of thousands of life reviews that people describe. You know that old saying, your life flashes before your eyes. Well, it's very true, and that's what near-death experiencers tell you is that you go through every bit of, the, of your life, all the crucial parts that are there to teach you about the lessons of good and bad that are still residual lessons for you to learn, to help you and your higher soul and your soulmates, your soul group. And the judgment is not by any higher power, it's by our higher soul. That's what's doing the judging in that realm. And that's when we go through those life reviews, it's not some vague sepia-tinted memory these are sharp, clear, crisp, absolute reliving the events more powerfully than when we live through them in the earthly realm. And we have to feel the power of our decisions, the emotional impact on our fellow beings. So if we lived a life handing out pain and suffering to others, we have to feel that in that life review. But we have to feel it far more sharply than they felt it here in the material realm, which is a pale, dim reflection of that far more real and crisp world of that, that gateway realm and the realm between lives where we reunite with our higher souls and where we reunite with our soul mates and in the glaring beautiful all loving light of that infinitely powerful God that is the setting in which we relive those events and then plan our next incarnations for coming back in but it is a very crisp ultra reality. This is all about those lessons that we're here to learn. And the coin of that realm is love. That unconditional love that goes far beyond the phrase, far beyond those words. And of course, so many who have had near-death experiences and shared death experiences and other similarly spiritually transformative experiences know exactly what that's all about, that unconditional love. And the reason it's so important for all of us to get is because we're here in soul school to learn those lessons of that love. And what we find is that that unconditional love has infinite power to heal. And I came from my journey to see that the hardships and difficulties in this life, and I promise you as a, as a neurosurgeon, as a doctor, that very much includes illness and injury. They are gifts. They are opportunity for growth of our souls.